but I have something else in mind. Uh, I want to talk about this, and it might not be what you want to talk about. But carry on. One of the things that um, keeps my mind occupied recently is the question about character and how do you create a relationship between people and our products. And over decades, legislation and then generations of car designers have created a toolkit that makes vehicles um, look like or feel like creatures and that's quite fascinating in a way because it's one of the or it's the most complex industrial product it's nearly a little bit unfair to the craftsmanship part of the job because that is the basis and it takes decades for people in our trade to get to that level of understanding how sculpture needs to be the volumes proportions all of these things we like to talk about they are the foundation. And I think then it gets interesting because the skill, as I said, is the base level. And when it comes to the character, then suddenly values like perceived intelligence. That's a very uh, interesting one because, okay, beauty is very subjective. The easy one is being aggressive or, or displaying aggression in design because we know how a face looks when you're angry. That is easy to inject into a product. But intelligence, try that. But there is a way, I think, and it, it is noticeable. I think that intelligence is not, because it is not an emotion, it's not something that can be done in one sculptural statement. You have to combine it with added value of the product. So for example, communicating technology, having layers of discovering things. This leads to a perception of intelligence. It's not just a superficial shape that can do that. It's the combination. It's such an abstract concept and it's so tricky to talk about it. Projecting that on products and then discussing it there is even, is even harder, I think. But it's something I, I play with and I think about a lot. If there is something else than the superficial emotions to convey in design. Thank you.